Okay, so the poem that I will be doing my presentation about is Now Let No Charitable Hope. So the poet is Eleanor Wiley. She was born into high society and had high expectations from her parents. She married three times and fell in love with her best friend's husband. So this may be the reason why we get the sense that she felt that she lived a life of unfulfillment and why the speaker of the poem may in fact be the poet, which is why I've wrote here that the poem is partly autobiographical. So the deeper meaning, as it says here, the poem is about loneliness and being without love in one's life. The speaker feels trapped within society and she wishes to escape from its restraints and expectations. So we are presented with the realities of a woman's position in the early 20th century of America, and that is to be a wife and a mother only, nothing more. There is no room for running off and falling in love, which is why the speaker who did just that is left feeling as though she has lived a life of unfulfillment, as I said before. Okay, so the first stanza. Now let no charitable hope confuse my mind with images of eagle and of antelope. I am by nature none of these. So first of all, we have the imperative let, which mirrors the speaker telling us that we should not feel sorry for her. It also communicates her strong sense of determination, which uh, we, we will focus on later on in the poem. And then we also have the negation, which shows that she is refusing hope, which to her is like charity, which is why she says charitable hope. She is rejecting that the idea of changing the life that she has found herself in. So we get the feeling that she is in acceptance. Um, and then we have the lexical field of hopes and dreams, which is seen in the words hope, mind and images. And this serves to contrast the life that she was born into with her fantasies of a life where she is free. Then, and the idea of being free is seen in the reference to eagle and antelope, which are both animals that symbolize freedom and liberty. And then we have the declarative sentence where it says, I am, and this indicates a calm, resolute tone showing once again how she is in acceptance of her life as a woman in this society and she is unwavering towards the hardships that she has faced and will most likely face later on in her life. The emphatic tone uh, used here is also displayed in the alliteration of the N sound which makes what she is saying even more firm and insistent. Okay, so the second stanza. I was, being human, born alone. I am, being woman, hard beset. I live by squeezing from a stone what little nourishment I get. Um, so the diction changes from um, the idea of her fantasizing about being free uh, towards a more cold tone where she accepts the hard reality of her life. Um, this is seen in the lexical field of hardship in the words alone, beset, stone and little. And then this is also emphasized in the use of the plosive alliter alliteration in the B sound. Um, despite the negativity of this stanza, the sense of the speaker being in control of her emotions is seen in the parallel structure of the first two verses. And this conveys a sense of self-control in the face of adversity. Um, the hardships that she faces are also seen in the metaphor, I live by squeezing from a stone what little nourishment I get. So this shows that it takes immense effort for even the smallest accomplishments for women in the early 20th century of American society. Although we are tempted to feel sorry for her, we do remember that it was she in fact who rejected um, the charitable hope and the impossible dreams and fantasies. If we look at the metaphor from a different 
perspective, we can in fact see that she has become incredibly strong and has a great sense of perseverance and determination as a consequence to the hardships she's faced as squeezing little nourishment from a stone takes immense willpower. Okay, so now we have the third and final stanza. It masks outrageous and austere, in, in masks outrageous and austere, the years go by in single file, but none has merited my fear and none has quite escaped my smile. Her life is personified by masks outrageous and austere, showing how she will live a life of highs and lows, that she can be serious yet fun and outgoing as seen in the adjectives outrageous and austere. This juxtaposes to um, the years go by in single file, showing that society has a way of making someone either bend or snap to its rules, to its expectations. People who can be fun and outgoing are forced to conform to society's expectations. And this refers back to the idea of the speaker feeling trapped and restricted. This is also seen through the reference to masks, which suggests people hiding who they really are for fear of being rejected by the expectations of others, by the expectations of their society. We see a shift in tone, which is marked by the connective but. And this shift in tone is towards a more positive one, uh, one a tone which is seen in the juxtaposition between fear and smile, which shows that what matters is not what life throws at you, but how you react to those hardships. The last word of the poem is positive, smile, showing that the writer has gained strength and perseverance from the difficulties that she has faced. Okay, so what I've done is I've arranged um, some topic areas uh, for the essay that I would write on this poem. So the first, for the first topic area, what I would do is I would focus on the first stanza and on how the speaker has dreams of escaping from the restraints of society. And I would talk about those impossible fantasies that she has. And then the I would focus on the second stanza where the speaker reflects back on the cold, hard, real, hard reality of her life. And I spelt hard wrong. Um, <clears throat> and then the last... For the last stanza, I for the last topic area, I would focus on the last stanza where she we see that she has gained strength from her life experiences and has chosen to face hardship with courage and with dignity. And that's it. Thank you for watching.